Hello everyone, I'm Mark with Corelight. Today I'm going to provide a quick overview of the X509 log. As an SSL or TLS session is being established, the server must authenticate itself to the client, and sometimes the client must also authenticate to the server. The X509 log generated by a Corelight sensor contains detailed information about any certificates observed during the negotiation of an SSL or TLS session. These X509 logs are linked to other logs using the ID field here. In the SSL log and the files log, this is called the FUID, or File Unique Identifier. The SSL log contains information about the SSL or TLS session and is detailed in another video. The files log contains file-specific information about the certificate, such as the size and MD5 or SHA hashes of the file. Here, I've highlighted a few fields, including the certificate key length and key type, and the certificate signing algorithm. These fields provide you with an opportunity to hunt for unusually weak certificates in use in your environment, either because they have a key with an insufficient bit length for the key type used, or because they are using an outdated signing algorithm which is known to have some weakness. This certificate appears to have a good key length for RSA and is using an SHA hash in the key signing algorithm rather than the older, disfavored MD5. Another notable characteristic of this certificate is its unusually long validity period. As we can see from the not valid before and not valid after fields, this certificate was minted with an extremely long 10-year validity period. Developers, attackers, and novice system administrators sometimes choose long certificate validity periods to minimize how often they must regenerate certificates. However, virtually all valid certificates in production use have a more reasonable certificate validity period, ranging from a few months to a few years. Of course, exceptions exist, but they should be investigated and validated. The certificate subject and issuer information, represented here, look entirely made up and can't be trusted. This, combined with the 10-year validity period, makes this certificate suspicious for all but local developer use. If you saw a connection from your network to a server across the internet using this certificate, would you be suspicious? I think it's definitely worth investigating. Finally, let's take a look at one more field. The certificate serial number is not glitzy or glamorous, but it does highlight a wonderful use case for Zeek and Corelight data. Advanced persistent threat actors often use SSL or TLS to encrypt their traffic these days. If they are discovered inside an environment, the incident response process will generate several indicators of compromise that can be used to detect their presence in other environments. Along with domain names, file hashes, and IP addresses, another useful indicator is the SSL or TLS certificate serial number. If you have Corelight data going back months or years, it would be easy to search for certificate serial numbers and other indicators of compromise in your historical data in order to determine whether your organization was compromised at any point in the past. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local Corelight representative. We're stronger when we defend together.